My name is Topher Payne, and I'm the playwright of Perfect Arrangement. Now, what made you take this subject and this issue and bring it forward? I was really intrigued by what was being beamed into living rooms in the 1950s. I love Lucy and Burns and Allen, the honeymooners, versus what was on the front page of the paper at the same time. Um, you know, the best example being Lucille Ball being the queen of television while also facing the House on American Activities Committee as a suspected communist. Lucille Ball was? Lucille Ball was. Desi Arnaz. Yeah, Desi Arnaz said the only thing read about Lucy is her hair, and even that's not real. <laughs> and, um, and so there was something really interesting to me about we were presenting this perfect image of, like, aspirational upper middle class Americana, exactly. Um, where the house is always perfectly clean, the women are vacuuming in pearls, um, and the husband brings home the bacon every night versus the reality of 1950s America, which was a, a time of great fear. They were afraid of a lot of things. You know, we're coming right out of World War II um, where a lot of things that we never thought could happen did happen with the attack on Pearl Harbor, with the number of lives lost. And so... At that time, weren't we also dealing with... There was a lot of hatred towards the Jews as well. Exactly. And so you have fear of Jewish Americans, fear of Japanese Americans, fear of Russians, fear of um, single women because the boys came home from the war and someone else had been doing their jobs. And they needed to send a message to American women that a woman's place is in the home. And so this whole image of the 1950s housewife came together. So I liked the idea of creating a play where people are consciously faking it and, and are trying to li present lives as perfect as those 50 sitcoms um, versus the reality of what's actually going on. I have a question. Nowadays, as much as we're out at per se, right. people are still faking it. Yeah. Why? Um, because this period, the Lavender Scare, um, which when I first read about it, I was so frustrated that I didn't already know about it, you know? Um, this was a significant moment where we laid the groundwork for that fear of other. Um, and I think, I think a, lot of, a lot of what we're dealing with today is the world is changing. The world is changing very, very fast. Um, and we're finding ways to celebrate the diversity in America in ways that we never have before. Um, and there are people who are who have not been prepared for that, whose life experiences do not lend themselves to celebrating that, and they're afraid, and they're reacting, and they're looking for someone to blame for how they feel. Um, that's why theater matters, you know, because it gives us the opportunity to start a dialogue and, to, and a safe place for people to hear a story about lives different from their own. Do you think at this day and age that the stories are all being told? Like, I think that we're suppressing a lot of what really does need to be told. Um, gosh, that's probably, <laughs> that'll probably always be our challenge, you know? Um, the, uh, the beautiful thing about when you come to see a show, you know, really, churches and theaters are the last places where people will come sit down and shut up <laughs> when you make people laugh they drop their defenses and they're more given to listening because they want to hear what you're going to say next also they say in in comedy the the baseline is tragedy yeah absolutely these are very funny people in a very serious situation which is probably true of all my shows <laughs> are you planning on writing more and more about this whole subject um I am always interested in, um, in the people who manage to go unnoticed. Those are the stories I love to tell, the people that we too quickly overlook, either um, because of their efforts or because of ours. And, um, and that's definitely the stories that I'm interested in telling. I'm Jennifer Van Dyke, and I'm playing Kitty Sunderson. And can you tell us a little bit about your character and the journey that she takes during this play? Kitty Sunderson 
appears to be a very ordinary housewife who is married to a man who has a very high position in the State Department. She's very proud of her husband, very proud of being a, a wonderful domestic partner. We don't call it that then. But, um, but, but very, very proud of all the things that in the 50s seemed to be um, sort of a paramount importance, how to run a house, how to, be a, how to be a good housewife. But Kitty has rather astute observations about everything that she sees, even though she doesn't know what she's seeing in the other characters in the play. So she's not aware of anyone's the pairing up that really is happening in the play, that it, it all appears to be one way and it's actually something else. And Kitty is not really aware of that, but she has a lot of things to say about what she does see. And um, she's a great deal of fun to play. So would you say that Kitty is the eyes and the ears of what America really was like? Well, this is the interesting thing. She's the eyes and ears of the sort of magazine version of America. But she's what what this what Topher Payne has created is a play where you realize that there's so many layers to what was really going on, the many different ways people are living lives. Even though there was a prescribed way to live a life, there were lots of other ways of living life. But but Kitty definitely fits into the more formulaic pattern. And you've done a lot of extensive TV credit can, TV work. Can you tell us a little bit about it? I can. Uh, living in New York for many many years. I've done, I'm basically uh, an ensemble player in Law and Order. No, I've done about 11 or 12 Law and Orders um, and all different uh, doctors, lawyers. I always play the very professional person on that, which is also why doing this play is so much fun because I'm playing uh, not a professional person. Um, and then I've done all the shows that are shooting now, so Elementary and Blacklist and um, New Amsterdam and Fringe and uh, all kinds of things that are, and films that are shot here across the universe and Michael Clayton and all kinds of films that, that shoot here, and it's a great city. There's so much work happening right now. Is there any TV shows or anything that we can see you in up and coming? The most, uh, let's see, what's, I, I, just, I just did my, my, my 12th or whatever, 13th Law and Order, um, but that, that, that's, that's aired. That was right before the end of this last season. Um, and uh, there are, uh, you can look for them, <laughs> because I did a bunch of things in the first season of, of a lot of new shows, they're, they're starting, there's, you can look for me in reruns. Let's